So, you just got Ableton Live 11, but you don't know where to get started. Then you have come to the right place, because today I'm showing you everything you need to know to create your first song in Ableton Live 11 in 11 minutes. My name is Matt Flank, let's get started. So, if you open up Ableton for the first time, you will either see this or this. And that is because Ableton has two different views. This is the session view. It is geared towards live playing and that is why Ableton is called Ableton Live. And then this is the arrangement view. It's a horizontal timeline and that is what I'm showing you today. To quickly switch between the views, you can use the tab key on your keyboard. Let's go back to the arrangement view. On the right you can see the different tracks and their controls. Now let's say that I want to record a virtual piano. For that I will need a MIDI track. If there is no MIDI track already, you can create a new one by right clicking and selecting insert MIDI track or use the shortcut Ctrl Shift T. Now I'm going to the browser. To open or close the browser use the shortcut Ctrl Alt B if you're on Windows or Command Alt B if you're on Mac. On here we see the different sections. We have sounds, drums, instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, max for life plugins, clips, samples, grooves and templates. I told you I was looking for a virtual piano. For that I would go to the instruments, go to piano and keys, and here I can see all kinds of pianos. If I click on one of them, I will hear a preview of the sound. Let's say I want an upright piano. I can simply double click on it to open it on a track or I can also drag it to an empty space to create a new track with the piano on it. Now you see I have a couple different controls to change the sound of the piano, but we will not take a look at that right now. To record the piano you will need to arm the track. And you can see if the track is armed by this red indicator. If it looks like this, that means the track is disarmed, simply click on it to arm it. Now to record, I'm first going to set my tempo. Let's say I want to use 80 BPM. I can change the tempo right up here in the corner. If you click once on a parameter, then you can change the value by typing in a number. I can also use tap tempo by tapping on the tap button. Let's change it back to 80. Now that I have my tempo set, I can record. To start recording, place your cursor wherever you want the recording to start and then simply click this record button. The countdown will now start and you will be able to start playing on your keyboard. Let's record some piano. Before I do that, I'm gonna enable the metronome to stay in tempo. To do that, you go to the corner up here and click this button. This enables the metronome. Now let's record again and play some piano. You can see I now recorded 4 bars of the piano. But maybe I'm not happy with the first take I did. And for that there is a new feature in Ableton Live 11 which is called Comping. I can simply select a region which I would like to record in. Then I press this loop button or I use the shortcut Ctrl L. If I then record and keep playing it will record multiple takes. Let's arm the track again and record 2 takes. Now I recorded two takes. To open the takes, use the shortcut Ctrl Alt U. If you want to see a full tutorial about comping, you can go to my tutorial which is linked on your screen right now. For now I'm just gonna select the second take because I think that one was pretty good. Then I close the take lanes again by using the same shortcut. And now we are going to record some audio. I'm going to get rid of these two tracks and simply leave one audio track. To change the input source of your audio track, you can go right there, click on the drop down menu and select the source you want. For this I'm going to record 3 for my piano. I'm gonna arm the track, set my cursor to the starting region of the recording area and then click the record button.
When I was recording, you could probably hear that the piano the first notes didn't play. You can only hear one note when I played an entire chord. And that is because some of the MIDI notes are not in this clip. To fix this, you can open the clip by double clicking on it. And then you can drag to the right by using the middle mouse button. And you can see these notes start before the start of the clip, which is this black line. To fix this, I'm simply going to select these notes and place them right after this black bar. And now you will hear the notes as well. Now that you know how to record, let's add some effects. Let's say I want to add some saturation to this bass. I'm now going to the audio effects tab on the right, go to drive and color and select saturator. I like the preset a bit warmer, so I'm going to select this one. Simply drag it to the track that you want the effect to apply to. If this bottom panel doesn't open, you can use the shortcut Ctrl Alt L. Now my bass has some saturation on it. This also made it a little bit louder, so I want to make it quieter again. To do this, I'm going to change the track volume right there and make it quieter. That's better. Now let's say I want to add another effect. Maybe I want to add some EQ. But if I don't want to go through all the menus, I can also search for the effect by using Ctrl F and typing EQ. I want the EQ8. When adding multiple effects to one track, like I did here, I have two effects on this one track. The effects will be processed from left to right. So keep that in mind. For example, in this case I added the EQ after the saturation, which means that the saturated bass will go through the EQ. But if I were to add the EQ before this saturator, the bass will be first EQ'd and then go through the saturator. Now that you know how to add some basic effects to a track and you know how to record, I want to show you some basic editing shortcuts that will save you a lot of time. The first one I want to teach you is how to split a clip. Simply select the clip where you want to split it. Let's say I want to split it right there. And then I click Ctrl or Command E on my keyboard. And now you can see if I zoom in that this clip is split in two. Next up, if you are on a MIDI track and you want to create a new empty MIDI region, you can select any region and then use the shortcut Ctrl or Command Shift M. This will create and open an empty MIDI clip. Let's close this again and go on to the next shortcut, which is how to consolidate clips together. Earlier I split these two clips as you can see, but now I want to consolidate them back together. To do this, I simply select the two clips by holding shift and clicking on the top bar and then use Ctrl J on my keyboard. Now the clips are back together. The next shortcut is to insert a region. I recorded this piano part and then this piano part with the bass. But maybe I want to add something in between. To do this I select a region that I want to add and use the shortcut Ctrl I. And if you want to delete a selected region, use the shortcut Ctrl or Command Shift Delete. These are some of the most basic shortcuts that I use the most. If you want to see more shortcuts, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and I might record a video on Ableton shortcuts. Then finally, I want to show you how to export your song because you want your friends to listen to it. I want to export this part, so I'm going to select this. It doesn't matter if I select only one track or all the tracks, we will change that in the export settings. To open the export window, use the shortcut Ctrl Shift R. On the top, you can select which tracks you want to be rendered. In this case, I want the master, but I could also select all the individual tracks, only the selected tracks or a specific track. I like to leave most of these off, but the one thing I like to change sometimes is normalize. This is if I were to send a demo to a friend and ask for feedback, I would turn normalize on, so the loudest point of the song will be 1 dB. I'm going to leave this off for now. Next, I need to choose the export format. If I want an MP3, I simply click this and select MP3 on. 
if I want a WAV, AIFF or FLAC file, I can select this right there, turn this on and select the settings right there. You can choose a bit depth, I'm gonna select 24 for now and set the dither options to off. Finally to export it, click the export button, select the location on your PC that you want to export it to and then you are done. Congratulations, you have now made your first song in Ableton Live 11. If this video was helpful, make sure to subscribe for more videos by me. I make tutorials, videos about free plugins, me making music and more. If you want to support this video, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. And if you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Now I want to thank you guys for watching. My name is Matt Flank. Peace out.